Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope that everyone is having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, you know, we're, we're making it through April. Holy cow. Um, it's just been flying by. I wanted to make an announcement um, that starting on Monday, the 24th, I will be doing a free spring challenge uh, for, for five days. So it'll be going through April 24th through um, April 28th, and it'll be all about increasing your energy. Um, I'm really excited to, to bring this to people. Um, so each day we'll have a different challenge, we'll have a different focus, and then you can bring it all together and you know utilize it throughout the rest of the spring, throughout summer, um, build upon it, start to acknowledge, you know, how you're feeling, what foods might be zapping your energy, that kind of stuff. So it really gets you in tune with your body, um, gives you that fresh start to really finish out your spring and enjoy your summer. So I'm excited to start that. Again, that is Monday, April 24th, uh, for five days. And I have, um, if you go to my website, Let's see if I can remember how to put this banner up. Um, here we go. Um, all right. So if you go to my website, you can um, find out more information on my pages uh, and then sign up from there. If you are interested in signing up and joining um, and getting to the Facebook group, uh, and, and don't want to go to my website, you can just comment below, maybe raise your hand, just be like, I'm interested in the challenge, or just yell challenge, and I will message you the link to sign up. So um, another way of doing it. So I am going to see how I can remove the banner. Hold on. Technology. Okay, there we go. Um, perfect. All right, so I am going to just, again, go get through all my different pages to see that I am actually live. Um, of course. Of course, I was on the wrong Facebook page. Okay, there I am in Facebook. Now I'm just going to look on YouTube to see if I am live there. Um, <laughs> and perfect. Looks like I am live in both the Facebook group and the Facebook page. So, um, I'm excited for today because I know we talked about, I mean, I'm always excited for every Wednesday and discussion that I bring to you guys, it seems. I just love talking about this stuff and, you know, helping you heal. So um, I'm, I'm excited because we get to get to the nutrition and treatment part of, you know, adrenal dysfunction. Um, next week, I will go over more of the... Um, thyroid component when it comes to nutrition and, and treatment and, you know, what all that entails. Um, but today I'm going to be going over adrenal dysfunction. So that was the very first in this series that we talked about, you know, talk about the different stages of adrenal dysfunction. Um, and you know, where we can start to feel that tired and, but yet we're wired. Um, and then, you know, once you start to hit that burnout of your adrenals, you're just exhausted. You're plain exhausted. Um, so there is a little spectrum and process that goes along with the dysfunction. So before we continue on with like this whole series of how, you know, adrenal dysfunction and thyroid dysfunction go hand in hand, we'll then go on like hormone dysfunctions, all of that. Um, so that can be like sex hormones, um, there it's everything is so intertwined that um, this discussion is going to continue on. I just want to give you some nutrition stuff before we keep going on and then 
circle all the way back. So um, I want you to have, you know, some of that fresh memory. So if you always want to, you know, you can always go and refresh with adrenal dysfunction and then watch this video again too. Um, and definitely watch the series if you haven't been up, up to speed yet on what we're talking about. Um, so overall, a dietary approach when it comes to adrenal dysfunction, you really want to focus on having a low glycemic load. So we don't want to have high blood sugars. We don't want to have this roller coaster of blood sugars. We want to carry a lower glycemic load. So glycemic load just means the different foods and their impact on your blood sugar. So if you have a higher glycemic load, you're going to be have you're going to be consuming more of those higher uh, carbohydrates, those more of those refined carbohydrates. So it's going to be a carb heavy type of eating pattern um, or, you know, just a lot of refined carbs. They are dense with, uh, with sugar, right? So, um, you know, it, it's just, it's stating that you have a lot of glucose and a lot of sugar that is inundating your body, your bloodstream, and we need to balance it out. Having more of a lower glycemic load means that there's a good balance between your proteins and your fats. The impact that these foods have on your blood sugar is not a spike like a like you're going up the hill of a roller coaster. Rather, it's pretty pretty even. You might have a little bit of a hill, but it, it evens out. Um, so a lower glycemic load can be like higher in fiber. Um, it follows more of what we call like a cardio metabolic food. food uh, words, tongue twisters, ah, um, cardio metabolic food plan. So like the modified, there's a modified Mediterranean approach that is usually involved with this. Um, again, it has low glycemic impact. So it's not affecting your blood sugars like refined carbs, which create that roller coaster effect, which in the body is not good, creates inflammation, it puts stress on the body. And when you have adrenal dysfunction, ultimately, we want to lower the stress. We want to take stress off of our adrenals, um, but the cardio metabolic food plan also balances your blood sugars. Uh, again, it's higher in fiber, lower in those simple sugars. Um, it also balances quality fats, uh, proteins, and it's packed with plants. So there's a lot of phytonutrients. It brings the different colors of the rainbow, which I always tell people about. Um, another approach is to consider an elimination diet. Um, you know, see what foods might be triggering to your body or leading to inflammation to your body. Avoid foods that maybe you've done testing and they show up on your testing as trigger foods. So that would be like I offer the uh, mediator release te testing or LEAP um, lifestyle eating and performance protocol for many of my clients. Um, and I've done it myself and it shows, you know, your lowest triggering foods up to your highest triggering foods in the body. And it has made a world of difference for myself and for my clients. Um, making sure that we don't have any naked carbs. So what that means is when we are having a carbohydrate, um, let's say maybe we're having quinoa or you want to have um a sweet potato, usually with the sweet potato, you'll want to have like some grass fed butter on it. So you have a fat or you eat it alongside a protein. Um, when we have naked carbs, we just have the sugars then are, that are breaking down. So it's, it's releasing sugars into the bloodstream, starting to create that hill or that incline. Um, but when you have a protein or a fat source, and dress your carbs with them. So for example, let's say you have a sweet potato and butter. It actually helps slowly release those sugars into your bloodstream. So it's more of like this really slow incline um, with your blood sugars in, in your body instead of this woo, fast incline. We're not wanting to take a ride. We're not wanting to go on any roller coasters. Um, so no naked carbs, making sure that if you have a carbohydrate, you're having it with a fat or a protein. 
We also want to avoid those refined carbs. So a lot of those flours, a lot of the pastas, the white rice, um, although there is a little caveat to white rice too. Um, but, you know, breads, that kind of stuff. So we want to, you know, make sure that we're opting for the unrefined carbohydrates, having good quality protein and oils, like nuts and seeds at all meals. Um, and we don't also want to let our blood sugars dip. That actually puts a strain on our adrenal glands as well. So we want to have a moderate carb intake. Um, so usually that's like 50% of your total carbs. You know, I tend to do more like 40% for people, um, which is still moderate. And you want to make sure it's coming from the complex carbs. A lot of those whole grains, um, complex starches. So you also want to eat regularly so that we don't have the low blood sugars. Uh, and that will be, you know, every three to four hours. At this point in time, we don't necessarily want to focus on intermittent fasting um, or fasting for long periods of time without eating. Like the 12 hours overnight, not bad. Uh, that's just kind of a standard intermittent fasting. But going for like 16 hours a day can actually put more strain on the adrenals. Eat high protein in the morning and eat higher carbs at night. The higher carbs at night will you know, and have them complex carbs, but, you know, have maybe a little more carbs in the evening to help you with that 12 hour fast overnight so that your blood sugars don't dip. We want to limit and avoid stimulants as well when it comes to healing our adrenals. So we want to really get away from the caffeine. If we do have caffeine, we don't be from like soda or, um, pop if you're from Minnesota, um, or, or coffee, we really, it would be better to have it more like the lower caffeine, like the, the green teas, um, even like the black teas, a lot of uh, gentler and less caffeine. Usually I tell people like the green tea. Um, we want to avoid those refined carbs. I'm going to say it again. So think of the sugars, the flours, the bread, fruit juices. Um, we want to avoid those. Uh, same with like chocolate as, you know, there's caffeine in chocolate too. Um, processed foods in, in general. So chocolate can be a stimulant, um, but getting rid of those processed foods in, in general, get in plenty of salt. So we want to make sure that we are having enough salt in our body. Usually where we see the problems when it comes to sodium and salt in our diet, it's coming from prepackaged foods. Um, and it's coming from not great quality foods. So let's make our own foods at home, add our own salt in there, add sea salt, add Himalayan salt, um, you know, add some iodized salt. Just make sure it's a high quality brand. Um, I really like Redmond's Real Salt. Um, that's what I use at home. And it has like various minerals in it too. Um, I, I have zero affiliation with them. I just... It, a quality brand that I use myself and recommend for people. So um, making sure that you're getting in plenty of salt that helps with our home hormonal balance, our thyroid, our adrenals, all of that. So um, we also want to address any nutritional insufficiencies. So are you getting enough vitamin C? Vitamin C is needed in organs that synthesize catecholamines. So those are like your epinephrine and norepinephrine and dopamine. Um, that would be your brain and your adrenals, which, you know, synthesize those catecholamines. Uh, making sure that we're getting in enough vitamin C is really going to help the brain and the adrenals do what they need to do. Food sources of vitamin C is going to be like the acerola cherries, rose hips is great, chili peppers, black currants, citrus fruits. So think of orange, grapefruits, lemon, lime. Cruciferous vegetables are also great so and, and full of vitamin C. A lot of those dark leafy greens are going to be higher in vitamin C. Um, so chopped broccoli, chopped kale, Brussels sprouts, red cabbage, cauliflower, those are great. Um, however, if you are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, we want to be wary of too many cruciferous veggies uh, as they can interfere with your body's production of thyroid hormone. So there is a delicate balance. Again, it's going to vary on the individual. 
White potatoes also have a source of vitamin C and potassium too. Uh, red peppers, sweet yellow peppers, strawberries, um, even blueberries, raspberries, papaya, guava, cantaloupe, tomatoes, but not cooked tomatoes because when you cook the tomatoes, they are actually going to eliminate that vitamin C. It, it kills off um, or deactivates that vitamin C, but it activates lycopene. Um, kiwi and also parsley. So just two tablespoons of parsley can actually give you 10 milligrams of vitamin C or 11% of your daily value, which is pretty cool. And you know, it's springtime. So parsley is, is sprouting. Um, making sure that you're having sufficient essential fatty acids. So your omega-3s and your omega-6s and omega-9s too. Um, but a deficiency is actually linked to lower plasma cortisol. And remember towards the end of um, the stages of adrenal dysfunction, we actually start to see stunted cortisol levels. So um, that's where we can start to really see that fatigue um, and that almost like cortisol resistance. Uh, food sources of your essential fatty acids are going to come from like nuts and seeds, flax seeds and chia seeds are great sources, sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, also good. Um, avocados, getting it from whole grains, so whole wheat, brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat, oats, amaranth, sorghum, millet, etc. Fatty fish, so like your tuna, mackerel, herring, trout, salmon, make sure they're all wild caught. Uh, we do not want the farm fish. Uh, that's going to lead to more inflammation in the body and like more toxicity and you know, that. eggs are a great source of fatty acids, olives and olive oil, coconut oil, omega-3 supplements, um, and cod liver oil is also great. Uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli, grass-fed meats, grass-fed butter, ghee, those are all awesome sources of essential fatty acids. Get in a variety. We want a variety making sure we're having enough zinc. So after we have these periods of stress, our zinc levels actually go down and our adrenaline levels increase. So when we're constantly under this chronic stress, which is what happens during adrenal dysfunction, we're burning through our zinc. Um, and if you, that's going to alter your immune function as well. Um, and then you get sick. That's another hit to depleting your zinc but you don't have enough zinc to actually re like help your immune function. So it's this nasty cycle, you guys. Um, but food sources of zinc are going to be oysters, lamb, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, grass-fed beef, and, you know, pasture, pasture-raised chicken, chickpeas, lentils, cocoa powder, cashews, and almonds, uh, kefir or kefir, never know which way to say it, or yogurt, mushrooms, spinach, avocado, and eggs. Eggs, man, they're just like, they're power packed. Um, especially when you have the high quality, you know, pastured, pasture raised eggs where like they're free range, all of that. Uh, panathenic acid, pantothenic acid, there we go, or um, vitamin B5. It, if you have a deficiency, it can cause impaired adrenocortical function and abnormal stress response. So we want to make sure that we're getting enough of our B vitamins. Um, and you can specifically get like more B5 from mushrooms. Think of shiitake, white button mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, um, chicken liver, duck liver, beef liver, endive, wild Atlantic salmon, bluefin tuna, peanuts, sunflower seeds, guava, wheat germ, potatoes, lobster, avocados, lentils, whey protein, um, camembert cheese, eggs, again, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, cauliflower. Those are just some of the few or some of the many, <laughs> few of the many. There we go. Um, magnesium. If you are deficient or insufficient in magnesium, this can lead to elevated HPA set point, um, which is not good for our body. <clears throat> Stress also increases our requirements for magnesium. When we're stressed, we are burning through our magnesium, just like we are our zinc. And unfortunately, our food sources are not necessarily giving us the sufficient amounts that we need. 
Um, so a lot of times I tell people to supplement with magnesium and usually that can be up to like 400 to 600 milligrams a day. Um, depends on the person though. And you want to start low and go slow. But food sources, nuts and seeds, like your roasted almonds or almond butter, roasted cashews, whole flax seed, dry roasted peanuts, hulled and roasted pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, um, legumes, like blo uh, boiled black beans, cooked edamame, cooked lima beans, fiber rich whole grains like cooked quinoa, shredded wheat, those are also high sources of magnesium. Then your various greens like cooked spinach, cooked Swiss chard, collard greens, avocados, bananas, papaya, blackberries, green peas, sweet corn, potatoes. Dark chocolate is a good source of magnesium. But again, when we're in like a, we're in adrenal dysfunction, we kind of want to steer clear of those stimulants. Um, mackerel is also a good source of magnesium. So sometimes supplement, supplementation will be involved when it comes to adrenal dysfunction. So, you know, if you're having like a multivitamin and mineral um, and you, and you want to take or need to take supplements to replete or get sufficient amounts of those various nutrients that I just spoke about above, um, make sure that you're getting a B complex. B, B vitamins, they are cofactors in hormone production. Um, specifically, you want to look and make sure that you're getting 100 to 150 milligrams of B5 in your vitamin or the supplement complex, the B complex, uh, 50 to 100 milligrams of B6, 1,000 micrograms of biotin, and 400 to 800 micrograms of folate. You want to make sure that you're getting in enough of the vitamin C, so one to two grams, and that it's also blended with other antioxidants too, because they help each other and are really good for your body. Uh, magnesium, again, it's going to be like 400 to 600 milligrams. And usually I tell people magnesium glycinate is one of the better ones. To lower your cortisol, there are supplements. Um, so, you know, if you've had your cortisol tested and you do have higher cortisol levels, um, phosphatidylserine supplementation can help people. Um, so that can be from 600 to 800 milligrams a day. So it attenuates the serum Cortisol response to acute exercise stress, increases performance, improves your mood, and uh, helps with lower feelings of stress. Also, some people may end up taking glandulars, um, but only if test results are showing that you do have low cortisol levels. Um, and Pure Encapsulations does have a couple good brands of that. Again, I'm not affiliated with them. Just throwing that out there. Adaptogens can also be very helpful for people with um, adrenal dysfunction. It can normalize the function and improve the response of, of yourself to stress. Um, so different adaptogenic herbs uh, may be more appropriate in specific hyper or hypo cortisol situations or states. And overall, adaptogens appear to have a balancing effect on our HPA axis through various mechanisms. Um, so there are some good blends out there from integrative therapeutics and pure encapsulations. Um, so there are, that are some that are out there that are already done that you can, you, know, you don't have to worry about buying different supplements. They already have the combinations for you. Uh, but there are herbs for hyperadrenal states such as rhodiola, um, rosea, but there is a fine line with um, taking it, you want to make sure that you have an appropriate dose with it because too low of a dose can actually lead to anxiety. St. John's work can sometimes be used as well for hyperadrenal states. Um, and then along with those different adaptogens, obviously lifestyle techniques want to be used or lifestyle, oh my gosh, lifestyle support is needed. <laughs> Um, so stress reduction techniques, there we go. Um, you know, having those dietary changes that are needed. So the low glo glycemic load, the frequent meals, the no stimulants, getting in moderate exercise. Um, it's important that we move the body and I will get to some caveats with that, um, in just a minute, but having a multivitamin as well can really help with that, those adaptogens too, um, making sure that you're having the extra magnesium and the C. Um, and for some people, DHEA 
can be indicated too. Again, it depends on the person um, and what test results are saying what, and you know, speaking with a, a doctor too. The herbs for more of the hypo adrenal states, so your adrenals are just like very low, not, function, not functioning very well. Um, Panix uh, ginseng is really helpful or ginseng. Again, I always say it wrong. Um, and licorice root <clears throat> can be very, very helpful too. And hormone replacement therapy can also be used for a hypocortisol and or hypo DHEA um, person too. It, it all depends on, on your treatment plan. But lifestyle tips in general with adrenal dysfunction. So getting in enough exercise and movement, we want to move the body, we need to move the body, but we don't want to be too strenuous, too strenuous. And we don't want to overexert ourselves because that puts more stress onto our adrenal glands. Because when we do have those higher intensity workouts or we overexert, it is considered a stress. Our, our body recognizes it as a stress. Um, when you don't have adrenal dysfunction and your body can adapt and, and recover quickly, that's great to have those high intensity workouts. But if you're already having adrenal dysfunction and your body cannot recover from this extra stress, it's only going to hurt and put more strain on the adrenals and cause more problems. Um, so that can be anywhere from those, you know, like HIIT workouts, um, trying to think of like even certain types of weightlifting, um, sometimes CrossFit for people. It's going to vary depending on the person. Running can sometimes be too overexerting for people and cause more problems. So it's just making sure that you're not doing too trenu strenuous of activities what that means, it's going to vary for you compared to someone else. Um, making sure that you're getting in plenty of rest. So for sleep, you know, maybe getting seven to 10 hours of sleep a night um, and, and practicing the good sleep hygiene where, you know, you're not eating right before bed. You're not staring at your phone or a screen. You are having the, the lights dim an hour before bed, maybe you're reading, maybe you're doing a relaxation technique before bed. Um, you're going to bed each night on a consistent, at a consistent time and waking up at a consistent time. But rest also means, you know, relaxation and downtime. It also means laughter and play. It's bringing in these different balances to our body and our mind. So um, relaxation, making sure that you're getting enough of it, that can be deep breathing, that can be meditation, that can be yoga. It can be taking many breaks through the day just to tell your body that it's safe and, you know, that stress mode can be shut off, shut down. Um, other, you know, stress management techniques can be like um, Qigong or Tai Chi, journaling, um, visualization, listening to having like sound therapies and listening to um, singing bowls or, you know, frequency music, whatever it is for you. Um, therapy can also be another great stress management tool. Making sure that you're getting in fresh air and sunlight every day. It helps rebalance the body. Maybe getting barefoot in, you know, on the ground for 10 minutes a day when it's not cold outside. Um, <clears throat> but having that grounding effect can rebalance those different processes and chemicals in the body. Um, other considerations, you know, when you are working on healing your adrenal dysfunction, what about your gut? Is your gut microbiome unbalanced? Um, you know, if there's inflammation going on, if you have leaky gut, which a lot of us do, um, it puts a lot of strain on the adrenals. And so if you are fixing your adrenals in these other areas, but you haven't fixed your gut microbiome or aren't fixing that as well, then it's only going to be taking away from what you're trying to do because it's still putting stress on the adrenals. And we want to take the stress off the adrenals. So we need to heal those other areas too. That means, you know, other hormones. Do you have other hormonal imbalances too? 
um, hormones pull from one another. So we need to make sure that we're balancing all of our hormones. So our thyroid and our sex hormones um, while we are doing the adrenal, uh, adrenal protocol. We also want to have a hormone balancing protocol too. Be patient. That's the other biggest thing is because all of this healing takes time. I like to tell people it's like peeling the layers of an onion. It takes time. You slow down at the times that you're ready to cry. You can cry. Um, but it's, it's, it's layers that we're working on. So it's going to take time. It took time to put these layers on. It's going to take time to, you know, take these layers off. So sometimes also when we're starting to feel better, we tend to overdo it. And we're like, I'm good. I can overexert myself or I can do this or maybe I can eat this. And it ends up setting the body back in time. So make sure you're going slow. Be kind to yourself and understand that it is a process. So it will take some time. Um, but you are working through the layers. So that's what I have for you guys today when it comes to um, adrenal dysfunction and, you know, what the treatment might look like when it comes from a, nu a nutritional approach, um, any additional supplementation that might, might be needed, other areas that might need treatment and focus on, and, you know, overall lifestyle factors too. The biggest thing is we want to take stress off of our adrenals. We want to lower stress in our body. Um, and yeah, start to feel better. Uh, I hope that you found this helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, I'm here to help or if you want more clarification on something. I am going to remind you again that on Monday, April 24th, I am doing my free five-day spring challenge where it's all about rebooting your energy, revving up your energy, putting the pep back into your step or back into your spring step <clears throat> and, you know, figuring out where are the areas that energy is zapping from me. So this challenge is going to really have you tune into your body um, and also have you start incorporating different lifestyle habits and foods to help you feel energized again. So that starts Monday, April 24th. If you are interested, please comment below, say challenge, and I will send you the link to sign up. There is going to be a Facebook group so that we can support one another. Um, but I also will be sending your daily challenges and information to email too. So if you are not a Facebook person, you can still be a part of the judge. Um, so again, comment challenge below if you're interested and want to get and want to get started on that on Monday with me. Um, and if you are joining the challenge, you know I would love to hear if you're excited. You know what you're most looking forward to. Um, and with that, yeah, go to my website and sign up for the challenge. Um, if not, I will send that link, send the link to you to sign up. Um, but with that, that's all I have for you today. And I hope that you have a fabulous rest of your Wednesday. And until next week, you guys take care.